Welcome to the August 20th, 2020 meeting of the Southampton Town Zoning Board of Appeals. This meeting is being held via video teleconferencing in accordance with Governor Cuomo's Order 202.1. And until further notice, all of the board's meetings will be held remotely. So we ask the public to continually check the town's website for updates and new information. There are also options on the website for public comments and to pre-register to speak on public hearings. So please consider that for all future meetings. If you wish to view tonight's live meeting only, please do not join the Zoom meeting. Please go to the town's meeting portal, choose the meeting group from the drop-down on the left, and click on the live link at the top of the page. If you wish to be heard during a meeting, but did not pre-register, please go to the town's meeting portal, choose the meeting group from the drop-down on the left, and you will find the information required to join the Zoom meeting. With that, I'd ask you uh, that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will be starting this meeting with the public hearings, and we will take number 12 out of order and first due to technical difficulties at our last meeting. We have applicants and members of the public standing by via Zoom webinar, which is being moderated by CTV. I think number 12 actually had technical difficulties with the prior meeting, um, but we're trying to make sure that, they, that, that everything goes smoothly with uh, number 12. Charles Certain will be muting the speakers until it is their time to give testimony before the board. Please be patient. If you find that you have difficulties accessing, as, accessing the hearings, please visit the town clerk's meeting portal and click on the instructions link. A reminder that applicants, agents, and members of the public speaking, other than attorneys, will be sworn in, will state their address for the record, and will offer their testimony as it relates to the application before the board. Board members who must recuse themselves from any application will state so on the record and will be removed from the meeting until the end of the hearing. Unless otherwise stated at the end of each hearing, all of these applications will remain open for written comments from the applicant and the public until September 21st, 2020. Those comments can be addressed to the board secretary and sent via email, mail, and or dropped off at town hall. Additionally, in accordance with the governor's order, these hearings will be recorded and will be posted on the town's website. And with that, I would make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes from our last meeting. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Uh, Mr. Tuttle wasn't at the last meeting, but I brought myself up to speed for the contents of the last meeting. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. And I have two amendments to the minutes. The first one is actually from our July 16th meeting uh, to uh, make a correction uh, that Cornelius uh, Kelly was accused on the application of Jack Bartelman. So do we have a motion to approve that? So amendment? moved. So moved. Thank you. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, next, I have an amendment from our last meeting on August 6th. Um, to reflect that Michael Daly arrived late to the meeting and also that the application of Frank Francis was reopened and adjourned to August 20th, 2020, rather than September 3rd. So we have a motion. Thank you. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. And now we'll go on to adjournments. Okay, the agenda, there are some adjournments with the agenda. So we will go to item eight on the agenda, which is KTB Flying Point Revocable Trust. Um, move to adjourn that to 10 1. We have a second. Second. Mr. All right. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Chair votes aye.
Item 10 on the agenda, which is John Nicoletti. I'll move to adjourn that to our September 3rd meeting, 9 3. Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Triple Talk. I mean, on the decision calendar, um, we have Mark Levin and Mariana Luce as the first two items. They've both been withdrawn, those applications. And then um, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Um, name off the decisions. They're all going to be put off to September 3rd. Zaplinski, K-A-R-P, Management Group, LLC. Gregory O'Halloran, Marlene O'Halloran, Frederick Van Wick, OPH Building Corp, uh, Christopher Norwood, Old Quag Development LLC and BH 680 LLC. I move that they all uh, will have those decisions on September 3rd. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so um, as far as the first uh, application we're going to hear tonight, it's going to be item 12 on the agenda which is Michael Scarola and Jacqueline Cress, 108 Springville Road, Hampton Bays, uh, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-261-3-10. It's my okay. belief that we, we already have jurisdiction, I believe. We do. Yep. Yep. This is the Radigans. Yes. Dave Radigan. Yep. Good evening, Dave. He said, good evening. Good evening. Okay, uh, good evening. Yeah, my name is Dave Wadigan. I was sworn in two weeks yep. again tonight. Uh, this again is with reference to Rolla application at 108, um, uh, out, uh, 108 Hill Spring Hill Road, Road in Hampton Bays. And just refreshing the board's memory, I don't know, I don't know if I'm too high or too low. Uh, my wife is here prompting me. Uh, in refreshing the memory, Oh, but, but do you want him to come right away? I'm just. You can just up, update the board. Okay, very good. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm refreshing the board memory. Uh, we were looking for some uh, setback relief, uh, area relief variants for a uh, an as deck, uh, as well as pyramid relief for a proposed two-story structure involving uh, 2,567 into the sky plane. Uh, we also were seeking from the town uh, code variants, uh, or variants 167B, 1A special type for variances, involving the existing 711 square foot cottage with a proposed expansion of 870 square feet to create a two bath home. Uh, this amount of square uh, feet expansion put us well over the 50% mass maximum expansion limit under the experience appeal. Although our appeal and arguments were sound and presented with reason, uh, it appears it was not well received by this board. We also argued that the use area variants as opposed to the use variants. Um, again, it appears that the board was uh, not very well persuaded by our presentation. I say all that to say this. It was also presented and discussed that the property lends itself to being a subdivided two single and separate parcels. And for this reason, Mr. Scarola and Ms. Cress, the owners, are requesting from the board at this time an adjournment from this appeal application. Uh, to grant some additional time to explore what might be all of their options. Uh, that two-week period that we had from the 6th uh, just uh, would not give us a lot of time. Therefore, we are seeking an adjournment of 60 to 90 days. I will draft a formal letter to the board secretary and take the appropriate $75 fee. We are looking to come back no later than mid-December and to be on our findings. Um, uh, we may at that time either uh, go ahead with the, with the application and choose to uh, continue our appeal, uh, or we may uh, amend the uh, application with regards to the degree of expansion. 
or we may end up the, the, the uh, owners may have withdrawn the request altogether. Uh, what's, what's the date you want, Dave? Mid November, if possible. Okay. What did Katie ask? She asked the date. Okay. Uh, my only suggestion is, and this is uh, directly from the owners, that uh, uh, that the board in the future are like same applications when you when when we're uh, talking about a 50% maximum expansion um, if we could possibly have known in effect that uh, you would have said no they would have changed their repeal um, that's the only thing uh, and the only question that I have we are going to be looking for subdivision approvals uh, it appears that that is a uh, pathway that the owners are going to take. Uh, yeah, we want to seek some uh, legal advice in the meantime and see if there's another pathway to make it happen. Uh, I, thank you for your service. Good. Luke, Luke, Luke let's find a date. And adjourn it to that date. Yep. The, the meetings in November are November 5th and November 19th. November 5th and the 19th. Yes, yeah, so the 5th. Uh, the 5th would be great. November 5th. Okay, but before we do that, I want to see, first of all, if the, any members of the board have any questions. And if not, I want to see if there's anyone from the public who is late waiting to be heard on Zoom this evening in connection with the application of Scarola and Cress for 108 Springville Road in Hampton Bays. I see no hands. Okay. So, Keith, it's yours. I'll move that we uh, adjourn this to our November 5th meeting. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Hi, Mr. Daly. Mike needs to. Mike, you're mic muted. Car. You're muted. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thanks very much. Have a good night. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, appreciate it. We appreciate your time. Okay, we're we'll moving move to the uh, item one on the agenda, which is 1206 Flying po Point Road, LLC, in Watermill. Suffolk County Tax Map 900-179-1-21. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code. 330-11, residential districts table of dimensional regulations for a building height of 46 feet 6 inches, where a maximum of 42 feet is permitted. 2. 330-84D for an encroachment in the amount of 118 cubic feet. Three, 330-46.2, B1, adjacent areas for a distance from the crest of the dune of 84.2 feet, where 125 feet is required, and four, 330-46.2, B4, for a minimum side yard setback of 24.8 feet, where 35.8 feet is required, and the total side yard setback to 61.4 feet, where... 71.7 feet is required, all for a proposed two-story dwelling on a non-conforming lot and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. Evening. Should I, should I begin? And, yep, whenever yeah. you're ready. Oh, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is John Bennett. I represent the applicant. I think Frank Greenwald is here um, with, with it as well. Um, hopefully, anyway. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to go. Th what we're trying to do is replace an existing house with a traditional style house. Um, and, um, and we need a little, what, what I think is a, a minimum, a bit of relief. Uh, but I, I do want to talk about the notice a little bit because uh, it, it suggests that we're asking for a lot more relief than we really are. This is really heightened pyramid. Uh, so let me talk about that. Um, the notice says that we want a building height of 46 and a half feet. What we've requested is 45 and a half feet. I think the confusion might 
result in the fact that if we were to take the, what we noted to the board was that if we were to take the existing house and as a matter of right, raise it to FEMA conformance, we would be at 46.6. Well, actually part of our argument is that if we took the existing house and raised it, as that code section allows you to do as a matter of right, we'd be at 46.6. We're actually proposing a house that is a foot less at 55 feet, six inches. So 45, six. Oh gosh, excuse me. Sorry, Keith. Uh, nice 45, try. Nice try for another 10 feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think as fast as I talk, I don't think I was going to slip another 10 feet by it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so that, 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 and again, that may be uh, a confusion as uh, that come out, came about of our argument, but yeah, we, we need 45 feet, six inches. Again, if we could lift the house as a matter of right, we'd be at 46 six inches. So that, that's one thing. Um, then the other thing is uh, a couple of things. Uh, minimum side yard setback of 24.8 where 35, eight feet is required. And a total side yard setback of 61.4 where 71.7 is required. This house, the existing house has a certificate of occupancy. Um, so, um, but really what so I'm a little bit, in terms of the continuation sections, I don't think we need any relief there because we're proposing on the west side, we're at, what are we at? We're at 24.1 existing and we're going to 24.8. And then on the east side, we're 35.8. Seven, and we're going to 36.6. And it's a little bit, I, I have the existing survey with me. I don't know if that's part of the package, but it should be. But even so, it's the, the existing setbacks are actually shown on the, um, on the proposed survey on the west side, right near the um, dry well, on the west side near the pool, you can see you can make out the existing setback is 24.1. And then on the west side, uh, where the, you see there's two dry wells on the, and then a, 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 an elevation 9.75 in a box, in a rectangular box, Above that, you can see the existing setback called out at 35.7. So, so I, I and so and then you and then what you do is you take the, um, the the total side yard setbacks. We're actually getting less as well because we have if you add the 24.1 and the 35.7, that gives you 59.8 in total. And I think, what, what did we say we we're going to in the total? 61.4. So under the continuation sections, I don't, I don't think we need any, any relief there. I don't think we, I don't think we need relief, relief for minimum on either side or total side yard. And of course it's all created by the, the rule against having you know, your side yard has to be open to the sky. So even though that's just a sex, an accessory structure, it has to meet the, the minimum and the total side yard setbacks. But our existing, we're doing better than our existing certificated house. So, you know, I give that to you for, I, I don't think we need that relief. Well, I'll check with Dennis. Okay, okay. And then, but obviously I, I think it's so minimal if we need it, you can either grant it that way or confirm that we're not increasing the degree of nonconformity of any of the separate side yards or of the, of the, of the total side yard. And then finally, um, the distance from the dune crest, um, we're actually improving that as well by, uh, by, by, by 0.1 feet, but nevertheless, You'll, you'll all remember 
uh, that that house down, what is it? Brine. Brine and the end of uh, Fowler. Fowler. There's a decision in which um, the board stated that the dune crest setback, unlike the coastal erosion hazard setback, which we're behind, but the dune crest setback is like any other zoning setback, and I benefit from the continuation uh, provisions of the code as well. So I'm pretty much, you know, I'm like a tiny bit back from the existing dune crest setback, but I'm not increasing it. And I, I believe that I have the benefit of n not only my interpretation of the law, that the dune crest setback is a zoning setback and I, I have, I'm entitled to the continuation sections, but this board's uh, determination, uh, not only in Brian, was it Brian Bailey? Yeah, down at the end there's a, at Flying Point, not Flying Point, Fowler Street, uh, but uh, so, some subsequent cases, might have, might have been um, FHZ as well or something like that. What was it? Feldman. F yeah, Feldman, yeah. So I, I, again, I, 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 usually I never quibble with the, the notices, but I, I think it's important to point this out because I don't think I need relief on the dune crest setback, the minimum side yard setback on either side or the total side yard setback uh, because those are, um, those are all should benefit from the continuation provision of the, um, of the town code and I, I, you know, that's so that I would ask you to look into that. In any case, the relief is minimum, but um, I, I don't. I don't think I need that relief. What what relief I unequivocally do we unequivocally unequivocally do need is a tiny bit of uh, pyramid, just a really small bit of pyramid on the east side, um, which uh, is about what is it? We have 118 cubic feet, um, which is pretty small. Um, Indeed, the house to the east benefits of a, ba a pyramid variance on both sides, both the east and the west. We need some uh, pyramid relief, a tiny bit of pyramid relief, uh, just for symmetry uh, um, on this very traditional house. Um, and uh, it's worth noting that, again, using this argument, which you've heard before and accepted, if we were to uh, raise the existing house, uh, that would result actually, as a matter of right, that would actually result in, in 121.5 cubic feet uh, as a matter of right. So even though it's only 3.5 feet uh, less, uh, or as of right, by raising the existing house, uh, pyramid encroachment um, is, is, is greater than what we're asking for. And in any event, it's, it's a almost, I think it might be one of the smaller pyramid requests I've ever, I've ever asked for. So hopefully that won't trouble you. I do want to speak uh, mostly about the height relief we're requesting. Um, and that is again from 40 to, to, to 45.6 where 42 is permitted. Um, if we were to raise the house and we have this on the, on the submissions, uh, the existing house is a matter of right, uh, we, we, we could be at 46.6 a foot more than what we're asking for. This is a, a, a traditional, we're trying to create a traditional house, a gabled roof house, which we're, we're praying that you will, uh, 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 will, 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 will agree is, is you know, it, it, it's an older style, older school, more traditional, uh, you know, Southampton house. Um, and, and, and that's, what my, my, my client prefers, and we're trying to keep in what I would consider the more uh, traditional uh, flying point uh, vernacular. There are some classic old houses uh, down on flying point, one in particular that sits out proud on the dune um, that is, in, in my opinion, more of the flying point vernacular, and that's what my client is, is trying to keep true to. Um, we need a little bit of relief here. Um, Couple things I want to point out quickly: uh, not being greedy in terms of the of the of the ceiling heights. Um, this extra, you know, uh, three and a half feet will allow us to put an 8.6 high ceiling on the front 
or the first floor, excuse me, and an 8.6 on the second floor, you know, this, we're not asking for relief because we want 12 foot high ceilings. We're asking for relief because we, you know, it, it becomes very difficult in that vertical building envelope to, to get to, uh, to a reasonable ceiling height when you're constructing um, a, 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 a traditional home. Um, what's driving most of the truncation, as it were, if that's a word, truncation, I guess, close enough for jazz, of, of the vertical building envelope is the fact that we're in an AE15 flood zone, but we're south of the LIMWA, the limited of moderate wave action line. And what that does in effect, um, if you're in an A zone, you know, you've got a you know, the governing uh, elevation is based upon the first floor. But when you're south of the Limwa Limwa line, that pretty much converts everything to a, a V zone. So instead of being in a zone, an AE15 zone, where the first floor elevation has to be elevated to 17, i.e. AE15 plus two feet of freeboard, we're in a VE zone, which means that the lowest horizontal structural member has to be at 17, i.e. 15 plus two feet of freeboard. And that steals, you know, you know building pack, uh, floor packages anywhere from two and a half to three feet, that steals all that away from you. Um, so that's really what we're asking for here. The ability with that um, couple, two, what, what do we have? Uh, I guess three, forty-two, three and a half feet, three and a half feet of height relief. We think it's going to be essentially uh, Im imperceptible, or certainly not perceptible unless you're really looking for it. It allows us to get to eight and a half foot ceilings. Uh, we have this very, very, very narrow vertical building envelope in which to try to build a traditional house. Um, and, and uh, you know, the board has, I think I, I put in one, two, two, three, four, five, six cases. I, there are some more out there in which the board granted similar relief, uh, Feldman to 45.5. Um, you know, there's some at 44, there's some at 45, but Feldman at 187 Dune is 45.5. And 153 mid ocean, uh, 4595. And the whole idea being our vertical building envelope is so squished. The nice thing about this, again, is that, that we're going to do a traditional house down there. There's, there's existing traditional house we'd like, to, we'd, like to, we'd like to rebuild. And of course, all the usual good stuff um, now will comply with the FEMA elevation requirements. So that's great for the environment and great for the flood damage prevention issues. Uh, you know, current, uh, you know, an IA system, uh, modern construction, um, all, all, the, all the good stuff that we hope you will agree will allow you to, to smile on our, on our requests. I, I, I don't have, I, is that it? Do I, have, I, I don't think I have anything else, but unless you have questions. John, I just want to comment that I think this is a, a, a modest application. Um, you know, the only relief that is, uh, uh, you, know, you know, that I pondered a little bit was the Crest of Dune, which you've explained that, that really basically you're you know, slightly different than what's currently there. So, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that, just speaking for myself. And as far as the height relief goes and the pyramid relief, the pyramid relief is completely minimal. And the height relief is something you are absolutely correct that particularly in flood zones uh, where you have to raise the house for FEMA, um, that it's a reasonable request. So I have no problems with this application. Thank you. Agreed. Uh, Mr. Bennett, I don't see a, uh, a survey of the existing uh, structure on there. I was there today um, looking at it, and I only see your survey of the proposed. Um, so I just want to be clear. So you're not looking for, if I could see where the existing structure was on there, that would help me. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can help you. And I'm really sorry, Michael. I, I thought we had the existing survey 
in there, but yeah. the existing building is sort of ghosted underneath the is proposed. It on this yeah. Sort of so, yeah, if you, you see, I'm just trying to indicate, and I'm so sorry. Go ahead. On the, this is, I, I, on the west side, towards the coast, the, the female zone line, there's a dry well out towards the water. And, yeah. and un underneath that dry well, you can just barely make it out. It says 24-1. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, and here's the 24-1. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see the ghost. Yeah, I'm so sorry. You know, I wish I was better at sharing. I wish I was better at sharing the screen, but I'm pretty much at the end of my technological envelope by just being able to log on. I'm so proud of myself that I can do that. But here's the existing survey, and it's 24-1 on the west side. And then on the east side, again, you sort of ghosted in there, okay? Uh, on the east side, there are these two dry wells, and then there's a... A, a, a rectangular box that has an elevation just above that is the ghost of the existing. Okay, I see it now. Called out at 35.7. Okay, thanks. Yeah. My, my apologies. I, if I had thought this was an issue, I, I would have made sure that you get the existing survey. What I'll do is, you know, just to make sure though, let's, we'll get copies of the existing surveys to you so you don't have to squint. <laughs> okay, because I was there today and I thought that the house was. Uh, was appropriate uh, for the, the street, the area, all of that. And if, uh, if this house is not going to be significantly uh, larger in terms of taking up more, um, more side yard uh, or requiring significantly more setbacks, then, um, you know, I'm fine with it as well. Okay. And, and I appreciate that. Again, we're trying to, we're trying to build a traditional house. So, that's a good thing in my book, anyway. Okay. Okay. I know Frank is was uh, is is waiting. I'm not sure whether he wants to add a few comments. Uh, Frank Greenwald, the architect for the applicant. Um, I, I basically, I'm so sorry, and you not state your address. Frank Greenwald, uh, architect for the applicant, uh, 295 Main Street, Sag Harbor. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Then give us your comments. Um, basically, just I would just reiterate what, what John has so graciously explained to everyone. Um, I, I think the big issue here, and it's not just this particular application, is, you know, do we want the town, the, the, the houses along the beach in the town of Southampton to have some variety, you know, or do we, we're sort of headed down this path of all of the new houses being flat roof, two-story modern boxes because that's, sort of the easiest thing to conform to with regard to this vertical envelope that we have. Um, you know, and I think the diversity of having traditional homes and contemporary homes together along that corridor is important. And I think the only way to get a real traditional home there is to have some relief from the, from the maximum uh, roof line. Um, so that's, what, that's basically what we're asking for. Okay. All right. Appreciate your comments. Any other any questions from members of the board? I I have a question, Frank. Um, do you know what the ceiling height is of the attic? It looks like there's a small attic on the plans. Uh, there is a small attic, uh, four and a half four and a half feet or so, and it sort of varies because that particular section is taken in one spot. But you can see um, you can see where the roof lines come down. It would be virtually nothing. I think the maximum would be is four and a half feet. Okay, just you know, just that that always matters to the board in terms of stories and habitable space. Yeah, no, it definitely would not be habitable. Okay, any other questions? Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application? Um, this is for um, twelve oh six. Flying Point Road in Watermill, the application of 1206 Flying Point Road, LLC. No head. Why don't we heard this would be the time. I, I, I'm sorry, I had one more thing to add. Uh, John, I saw in here that you included a letter of non-jurisdiction from the from Tom Board. Is that for this application? 
Yeah, that makes sense. It's uh, on the other side of a structure that existed uh, in 93, 92, 93, and their jurisdiction would be, you know, uh, title. So across that's, the street, that's, across the street, yeah, across right? The street, across the street, yeah. There's nothing on the, this side, thank you, yeah. That's in there? Oh, that's good. Okay, great, yeah. Go ahead. Right, isn't, I think I'm right about that. that I mean, you know, it, it would be one thing if it was if Fresh Weber's title and that was, it, that the road was there and in, yeah, uh, that's, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was because they own the little parcel across the street. The road was there, clearly was there in 1993. Uh, if, yeah. I'm, I'm really dating myself, but you'll probably remember in uh, Woody Allen movie, in which he's, he and he's driving down that Flying Point Road uh, in, a, in a Volkswagen Beetle, and that's like mid-70s. What was that? It's the one, Annie Hall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Charlie, do you say no one's waiting? I see no hands. No hands. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, it's yours. Okay. Um, so we will uh, close the um, the public hearing uh, and keep it open for any written submissions. What is our date now, uh, Katie? Or uh, for... doing written subs uh, for thirty days till. Uh, 921 with a decision on 10 1. So we'll keep open for written subs until September 21st with a uh, decision for October 1st. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Cuthill. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Thank you both. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you, folks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Item two on the agenda is Almonds LLC, 28 Bayview Drive East in mm -hmm. Noyant, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-9-2-66. Applicant requests relief from Town Code 330-11, Residential Districts Table of Dimensional Regulations for a principal rear yard setback of 25.3 feet where 30 feet is required in mm -hmm. Town Code 330-84D. Pyramid height for an encroachment in the amount of 2,983.3 cubic feet, 1,690.2 cubic feet on the west side, 1,293.1 cubic feet on the east side, all for a proposed two-story dwelling and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Bruce, set to swear you in. If you can state your name and address. Uh, Bruce Anderson, Suffolk Environmental Consulting, Main Street, Bridge, Hampton, for the applicant. And do you to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, you tell us about the application. Okay, I just want to start with uh, what we, uh, with the uh, relief requested. This is a house, there's an existing house, is an improved property, a bulkheaded uh, waterfront parcel. Uh, that benefits from a CO, and the existing house is set back from the rear lot line, which is Bayview Drive, by 25.3 feet, and the proposed house, um, the house we seek to construct, will maintain that same setback. So I believe we benefit from continuance with respect to rear yard setback. Um, so we are, however, requesting a zoning variance pursuant to 330.84d for the construction of a new single-family dwelling. The request of pyramid nonconformity would total 2,983.3 feet, which would consist of uh, 1,293.10 cubic feet on the east side of the house and 1,684.48 feet on the west side of the house. As I said, this is an existing uh, property is improved with a one-story single-family dwelling with deck constructed in 1970. Uh, the subject parcel contains uh, 11,600 square feet and is located in an R10 zoning district. 
the existing, uh, as I said before, the existing dwelling, uh, that, that rear yard setback is non-conforming because um, 30 feet would normally be the setback in an R10 zone. Um, it's, it's part, this parcel is part of a waterfront community known as Bay Point. And Bay Point actually contains 238 lots, most of which are 10,000 square feet or in some cases less in area. Because the Bay Point uh, area is zoned R10, uh, it goes with individual side yard setbacks of 10 feet and a total side yard setback of 25 feet. So that the majority of the developed lots, which is nearly all of it is developed, and I don't, I'm not aware of any vacant lots actually, um, uh, uh, any two-story house meeting side yard setbacks would display non-compliance with respect to the pyramid law, which as we know is adopted back in 1992 and subsequently uh, modified for various floodplain reasons, et cetera. Um, or there's a number of parcels and quite numerous parcels that benefit from, uh, with respect to uh, um, variance relief. We have attached a zoning analysis uh, that identifies the adjacent waterfront parcels benefiting from zoning relief uh, from the pyramid law. And when you go through those decisions, you'll see a wide range of variants given that, that range between 5,298 uh, cubic feet to as little as 339 cubic feet. So in this application, we're requesting a total of 2,983.3 cubic feet, which places us squarely within the range of relief granted for this area. Um, we would again maintain the same uh, rear yard setback as the existing, and it's important to note that we comply with all other dimensional setbacks uh, in this R10 zone. Um, we have filed applications with the Conservation Board, which we expect will be approved um, as we comply with the dimensional setbacks pertaining to bulkheaded properties. We already benefit from a letter of non-jurisdiction granted by NYSDEC because the property is bulkheaded and has been bulkheaded since the adoption of their title wetland law in 1977. Uh, we also fall within the town's high priority area pursuant to the CPF water quality improvement plans and the applicant has proposed to install an alternative IA outs uh, septic system that complies in all respects with the town's regulations at, at section 123-52 um, which, which deals with alternative septic systems. Likewise, we will with uh, the town's stormwater management regulations. And finally, the, the house would be elevated suitably as to comply uh, with the applicable FEMA regulations. We submit that the variance would not cause an undesirable change in the neighborhood as a proposed dwelling is consistent with other similar dwellings in the neighborhood. And it's quite similar, in fact, to the uh, contemporary house directly next door. Um, we are, again, within the, well, the range of similar uh, pyramid uh, setbacks granted throughout this area. We submit the benefits cannot be uh, achieved without a variance because the lot width is limited to 75 feet. And although the dwelling conforms with all uh, uh, setback regulations, including side yard setbacks, um, any proposed uh, two-story house would run afoul of, uh, of uh, the variance uh, restrictions. Um, we submit the variance restrictions are not substantial in relationship to the area of the lot, the width of the lot, and the size of the existing dwelling. The granting of the variance will not have an adverse effect on the physical and environmental conditions uh, of the neighborhood because we comply with virtually all zoning restrictions, all environmental restrictions, and all uh, floodplain restrictions. So in sum, we submit the benefit of the applicant if the requested determination is granted outweighs any detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community. 
The benefit to the applicant is the ability to uh, construct a new dwelling, and we submit there is no detriment to the uh, neighborhood or community. Um, I will answer any questions you may have. Bruce. Bruce. Yes. Yes, uh, for some reason, I can't seem to find my survey. How many square feet is the lot? The lot is um, 11,611 square feet. Okay, and what's the dimensions of it? It is 75 feet on the road. It is um, 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 uh, 138 feet on the westerly side lot line, which extends to the, the bulkhead or the high water line. Mm -hmm. It is 171.28 feet on the easterly side lot line, which is from hey, the road good. to the water. All right. So listen, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the lot seems to be somewhat constrained. You know what I mean? And uh, I think this is a good application um, as far as the pyramid height and all that. So, you know, I don't have a problem with it. And you're getting rid of the existing sanitary right up on the water and moving it yeah, back to the street. That is right. I should, have, right. I should have mentioned that. It's good as far as I'm concerned. I have no issues with it either. I have no issues with it. Okay. Um, any other questions to members of the board or Katie? Uh, no, I'll be interested to hear if there's anybody here. We did get two letters in opposition. We did. Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard in connection with the application of Almonds LLC? This is for 28 Bayview Drive East in Noyak. This, uh, I think Item. Nina wants to there speak. Up. Speak up. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Okay, fine. Can't, we just can't see you right now. Oh. You click on video? Yeah, I'm doing it. There we go. Okay, I got you. All right. Um, my name is Regina Umanitsky. I sent a letter uh, objecting. Okay. Oh, well, you want me to? You have to swear you in. You can state your okay, address. Okay. You your address, Mrs. Umanitsky. Your address? Your address. Oh. I can't hear you. 26, are you 26? 24 Bayview Drive, East Santa Harbor, New York. Okay, and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Okay, and so you're a next door neighbor? Yes. Okay. I am to the uh, west. Okay. And over the years we've been living here, this was a resale. We bought it after the house was constructed. And back in... Um, 2018, I was here and um, there was a storm and the entire backyard flooded with uh, seawater and it uh, took many hours for it to dissipate. It also went up to the house as well. And if there is a pool in this area that you're proposing, it's going to be flooded with salt water. Also, during this period of time, the water overflowed into my yard and killing a number of plants and uh, bushes. Um, it, it's, it took a, a long time for it to go recede back into the cove. Then during Sandy, the water came up to the house. I wasn't living here, but the previous owner I played bridge with, and she told me that she had water in her bedroom, in her living room and dining room area. They hired a um, local carpenter, and the water seeped as high as three feet on the sheetrock. All the floors had to be taken out, and he replaced them. And um, I just don't think the pool is in the, the correct spot. It's, going, it's in a subject to water coming in from the cove. Also, it's, uh, I noticed that where the pool is located, it's going to be very visible from my property, too. And I feel that's an infringement of my privacy. Um, uh, with, with me here is Charles Canavan, a neighbor, and I know he has a number of questions to ask, 
And um, also, um, perhaps you'd like to sign him then and... Um, yep, at the swear you in, if you can state your okay, name. Okay, go right. ahead, come on. <clears throat> go ahead. Yep, you can state your name and address. My name's Charles Canavan, 30 Bayview Drive East, Sag Harbor, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, and you're an adjacent property owner as well? Yes, I'm on the east side of the property. Okay. And what would you like to tell us? Well, I just think it's absurd that uh, on a lot that's 75 feet wide, somebody wants to triple the size of the house that's going on the lot. The lot, the house that is there now fits perfectly. This is, seems to me, just an abomination, a money-grabbing attempt at buying the most inexpensive lot they can and putting the biggest possible house on it that is in violation of all the rules that we have abided by over the years. The pyramid rule is a good idea. These setbacks are a good idea. Open skies, open views. This will make it look a lot more like the Bronx. And these have been granted before. There's a smattering of them in the neighborhood. These were mistakes. These, that was poor judgment and poor choice. And the last thing we need is more of them towering over our homes, our beautiful, modest homes here. It's outrageous. It's a ridiculous request. Okay. Thank you for your we comment. That's square footage. Yeah, they're, they're asking for 3,500 square feet in a, in a Zillow ad uh, on a 75 foot wide lot. That's outrageous. Just because it was done before in the area doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it should be continued. Is the house that exists right now, is it a one story? Is that why it's so much bigger? Yes. Yes. Are there other yeah. two stories in the vicinity? How, how, uh, is your house two stories? Yeah, my house is two stories and it abides by the pyramid law. Okay. Which I, which I knew I wanted a certain house. I needed a certain lot, so I built the law, uh, built the house according to the to the regulations. As did my neighbor on the east side. If you want a thirty five hundred square foot house, go get an acre or two on the water. Don't put it on a tiny lot, post and stamp lot, seventy five feet wide. It would look outrageous. Just trash the neighborhood. Just because it was done before doesn't mean it was a good idea. Doesn't okay. mean it's you want safe. us to deny deny the variance? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. I would, do you have any other, are there any other comments? Well, can I ask Charles a question? Is it Charles? Sure. Charles, uh, do you, as your neighbor, Regina mentioned about the water gap, the water. Do, you, uh, do you have any recollection of any problems also related to that? Sure, the water has come up on certain occasions. Uh, could, you could, you, could you elaborate on that, please? Well, um, I've seen the water come up to the backyard of, of this proposed house at 28, very, uh, five, six times since I've been here in 25 years or so, right, as Regina said, right into that house. And what they're proposing to do with the new house is go um, so much closer with the house than it is now. And it already flooded the house repeatedly as the house is now, further from the water. You go a little closer to the water, we'll just fill that swimming pool and fill that house with water, salt water. And if you want to go up higher and really violate the pyramid rule, we can really destroy the neighborhood. As they're asking for now, if this is granted now, it will be the tallest house on the block. It will look like something out of uh, Trump Towers or something. It's just outrageous. It just shouldn't even be considered. Well, we consider applications. When we have an application, we, we have public hearings. That's what this is for. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, um, if I any may... questions, comments? Yes. Like... I'm sorry. Do you have anything else you want to add? Yeah, yes, we'd like I'm... to this, uh, I'm postpone and adjourn because we need to have this seriously looked at with attorneys and architects. Okay. Well, there's going to be a written comment period, uh, most certainly. Yes. Okay. Hey, Charles, are you saying that you want to uh, retain an attorney and have the attorney come at, at an adjourned hearing? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, Bruce. 
I will read from you a variance decision granted to the house next door. Which one? Which house? Irene Pletka, 24 Bayview Drive. That would be the house that uh, Humanitsky resides in. And she purchased this house, but this is what she purchased. Applicant, this is a granted relief, seeks relief and obtained relief from the provisions of 13315 d three tenths, four tenths relief, accessory construction of a swimming pool, and section 84 uh, 3384 d pyramid height law to allow for the reconstruction of a dwelling on a non conforming lot and any other relief uh, necessary. This is for a two story. Um, house um, um, on a similarly sized property. Uh, the footprint of the house on the decision is 2300 and change, which is what we have. The pool is between the house and the road, and so they had to get a variance for that. And I also want to point out that the height limitation of 32 feet we're well under that. Uh, the overall height as measured from the street is 22.75 feet. So it's, we're of the view that we're, we're not um, seeking um, anything that's extraordinary. We're not asked for any coverage relief. We're not asking for any setback relief. We're 10 feet or just slightly less than 10 feet below the maximum height. So I just want the, the board to take notice of that. As to flooding, um, I don't know uh, what the situation for uh, Mr. Canavan is, but this is a house that is, uh, uh, we have a first floor elevation of nine feet in an in a AE elevation six uh, flood zone. So we're actually a foot higher um, on that um, than the floodplain including its two foot freeboard would require. We did that uh, principally so that the septic system would function correctly. And so I'd like the board to take notice of that as well. Bruce, is there any relief for the deck and the swimming pool slash spa being requested? No. We were not asking for any relief on that. So that's all as of right? Correct? Yes, sir. I mentioned something. Um, my swimming, where I live at um, next door, um, the swimming pool is on the street side and it's between the two properties because apparently the woman who bought the house before us couldn't get a uh, swimming pool permit for the water side. And they said she must build it on the side property. So now mine is about, oh, about 10 feet from the street between my neighbor's house. So it's not on the water side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, apparently this, this pool does not require relief. It's as of right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Is there anyone else from the public who would like to be heard this evening can through the application of Almonds LLC or 28 Bayview Drive East in Noyak? I see none. Um, if not, I just want to uh, mention, I know uh, uh, one of the neighbors uh, wants to have to retain an attorney. And so I think one initial question is whether we want to have that attorney give their submission in a written submission or whether we want to keep the public hearing open and have, have uh, them come back with their attorney. So I wanted to ask uh, the other board members uh, how you want to handle that. I think I'd be fine with written submissions. I would like to see the attorney. If somebody's going to go to the trouble of hiring an attorney, I think it's only fair for that person, if he wants the attorney to appear, to have an opportunity for the attorney to come. Well, then they, again, they, they didn't hire the attorney for tonight. They could have. They could have. Uh, well, maybe he didn't, for some reason, he didn't think, and uh, he wasn't given that option. I, well, I don't know. I mean, he, he, he participated in this, uh, you know, in, in this uh, meeting to the so neighbor's side. Okay. Um, other board members, where, where, where are you on this? I'm fine with a written submission. Okay. Jason? I'm good with a written submission. 
I'm good with written submission too. Okay, because we're going to be keep, keeping it open anyway uh, for written comments. Um, all right. So uh, Brian's lead on the application, but he's not here. Um, so um, I'll make the motion that we close the application of Almonds LLC except for written submissions. Katie, what's the date again on the written submissions? Uh, 9-21 with the decision 10-1. Okay. So I would close, close the public hearing except for written submissions uh, that will be due by end of business on September 21st, including any attorney uh, uh, submissions on behalf of the neighbors or the neighbors themselves or anyone else who's watching this public hearing. And Bruce, for you as well. And we will have a decision ready on our October 1st meeting. I thank you greatly. Second. Second. Okay. Um, who did the first second? I'm not sure. It was either Mike or, or, or Keith. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. Okay. Mr. Tito. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Item, on, item three on the, on the agenda is Joseph M. Citrone, 39 Wakeman Road in Hampton Bays, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-297-3-49. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code for various additions and renovations to a dwelling under construction on a non-conforming lot. One, for a front porch. 330-115C continuance for a principal front yard setback of 28.5 feet where 29 feet is existing. Two, for a rear porch, 330-115C for a principal minimum side yard setback of 7.1 feet where 7.3 feet is existing and a principal total side yard setback of 21.5 feet where 21.7 feet is existing, and three, for a roof renovation, 330-84D, pyramid height per encroachment in the amount of 1,963.63 cubic feet, 198 cubic feet on the north side, and 1,765.63 cubic feet proposed south side. Additional 1,650 cubic feet on north side, and 115.63 cubic feet south side and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Hi, my name is Jeff Ulyse, uh, 147 uh, Lakeshore Road, around Kakama, New York. Okay, and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, and you have someone with you who also needs to be sworn in? I, uh, we can swear to them now, sure. Sure. Okay. I just want to swear you both in as well. If you can state your names and addresses for the record. Hi, Patricia Citrone, 154 Springville Road, Hampton Bays, New York. Okay, and sir? Joseph Citrone, 154 Springville Road, Hampton Bays, New York. And do you both swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay, can you tell us about the application? Uh, in reference to the application, um, 39 Wakeman Road, uh, it's pre-existing, non-conforming property, originally CO from 1979 uh, with a pre-existing CO. Uh, the uh, area zoning, the zoning area is R20, uh, where my, this particular lot uh, has a total area of 7,474 square feet. So essentially a 50 by 150 uh, size lot. Um, for the purposes of this application, I'd like to primarily focus on the pyramid relief. Uh, we are requesting uh, relief off the front yard and side yard, uh, which are we would consider not to be substantial. Um, but uh, for this application, uh, we included those um, uh, those encroachments uh, as part of this application. Um, but we're definitely want to focus primarily on the pyramid relief. Uh, we're on the north side. Uh, my client is asking for um, a total of. 1,567 cubic feet, uh, where existing is 198 cubic feet, um, which if you have the sketch in front of you, um, maybe I can pull up and share the screen. Let's see.
Jeff, this is for a one-story dwelling? Yes, this is a one-story dwelling. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I am sharing this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the existing, ex existing house, I believe, was about around 600 uh, square feet uh, when my clients originally purchased it. Um, they applied for building permits and were issued building permits uh, December 26, 2019 for uh, the alterations uh, to the uh, roof, uh, as, well of, uh, as well as interior uh, renovations to the existing house. Um, uh, to be fully transparent, the house was uh, basically in a bad shape. Bad shape. And my clients came in uh, and uh, requested the permit to kind of uh, uplift uh, the neighborhood and also give the house itself uh, a little bit of a facelift. Um, now, as far as the, uh, the permit is concerned, my clients uh, did apply and were approved and were issued a permit for uh, essentially what we see now. Uh, around uh, January, uh, uh, late February actually, late January, January. Late January excuse me, um, building inspector David Kanji uh, came to the site uh, for a framing inspection and noticed that the roof line uh, might be encroaching uh, in pyramid. Uh, and after further investigation, uh, we did come to the conclusion that it is encroaching uh, uh, far more than what was originally pre-existing, uh, which is why we're in front of you today. Uh, so I'd like to reiterate, uh, my clients did went and uh, obtained a building permit uh, for the work uh, that, is, that was started um, and were issued the permit uh, via the principal uh, building inspector at the time, which was Dennis O'Rourke. Uh, but this encroachment for one reason or another was missed uh, and hence the project uh, was stopped uh, since uh, late January. Um, so the house itself currently sits under a tarp. Uh, it has been sit sitting uh, obviously because of uh, COVID, um, not much work can be done. And obviously since we, need, we do need the grant or just need the approval of this variance before they can proceed with the rest of the job itself. Um, I'd also like to mention um, the house as it is, is 20, uh, is 20 feet in total height, um, where obviously Town of Southampton permits up to 32 feet. The square footage of the house um, uh, is a total of about 1,000 1, square feet, which includes uh, a rear screened in porch, which is also part of the application uh, that was uh, later on issued uh, a permit. Um, so I say all that primarily to state that this is uh, uh, clearly a modest sized house um, and because of the size of the lot, uh, there's extreme amounts of uh, hardship in regards to zoning. Uh, so we are in front of you We're asking for relief for both the south side and the north side of the property um, in regards to pyramid. Uh, and once again, um, I'll state the encroachment on the front yard setback of, a, of about uh, six inches and about two inches on the side yard setback as well. Uh, I wanted to pass the, uh, the floor to my clients so they can kind of give you a brief, a brief history of what they've had to endure with this particular property. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so we, we purchased this house last year after, it took about a year. We looked at it two years ago. It took a year for us to close. Uh, we finally closed last September. We hired Jeff as our permit expediter, and then we hired a architect. We paid the architect $6,000 to come up with these plans. Our original idea was just to add a screened in porch. Uh, the, hand, the plans were done, they were handed in, everything was approved. We built the house exactly to the specs of the plan. And then when we had the framing inspection, we were told that it was built illegally. Um, so then Jeff got us a meeting. We wanted to know what happened and, and how, did this, how did that happen when we did everything by the book. And we met with, who was the head inspector at the time? Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mike Menacasa. We, we met with the head inspector, Mike Menacasa, and he basically told us to, 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 to our face, Oops. Oops, we missed it. We made a mistake. It's our fault. Um, but there's really nothing we could do about it. Now that it was brought to attention, you have to go in front of the zoning board 
and he said that he was going to write a letter explaining this, what ha- you know, explaining what happened, but he said it was out of his control. And you can just, you know, imagine our frustration with it. And then that happened like a month before COVID. And then once COVID hit, then nothing was getting accomplished. So now that the house has basically been sitting, rotting for seven, eight months. And it's just been very, very frustrating, especially since, like I said, we did everything by the book. We didn't cut any corners and everything, all the plans that we handed in got approved by the town. Anything? No. Well, I appreciate the fact that you got permits. I, I do. And I think the professionals that you relied upon, you know, they, they you know, unfortunately did not um, understand uh, that what was being constructed needed variance relief. That's and inclusive. That's inclusive of the building department. Yeah. 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 Right. Building department played a role in this. They missed the whole thing too. So was you know. your, was your, could I ask you, was your architect a local architect? Uh, where was he? Uh, uh, the architect is from Holtzville, done multiple projects in the town with him uh, previously. Uh, we've never run into an issue before, but obviously uh, the building department um, is, in, is in place as a safeguard for, you know, mistakes uh, right. by local design professionals. Yeah, and, right. and people make mistakes, and I get that. Absolutely. But I mean, just, just looking at it, and I drove by as well, it is a very narrow lot. So, you know, it was bound to have issues. And, you know, it, it's, un, you know <laughs> it's unfortunate that, it, that, that all of this happened to you both, and I, I sympathize with that. I, I do. Uh, if the building department would have caught it, you at least wouldn't have had partial construction and have and, and have had to put a tarp and then on top of that COVID, you know, delaying everything for months and months and months. So, um, and so you're here to rectify it and I appreciate that. Right. As for the relief, the relief in my view, in the scheme of things is fairly modest in terms of the setback relief. The only relief that is on the larger side is the, the pyramid relief, but even on the larger side, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's less than 2000 cubic feet altogether. And we do for, for one story for one story. Yeah. But it's less than 2000, um, which, you know, in, in my view is something that we fairly routinely grant. Has any neighbors um, given any comments? Um, with respect to the neighbors, we actually do have a neighbor uh, right next door on the south side who's actually building a new construction, who has no concern and has been uh, uh, pretty uh, friendly with the with my clients. So, uh, as far as our understanding is, we don't have any complaints from uh, any neighborhood, nor do we believe that uh, the project itself is going to have any adverse impact on the neighborhood. I have no problem in this application. I got to tell you, you know, but they they came, they got the permits. And, you know, we seem to have a problem down in the building department, so I have no problem with this application at all. No problem either. In the same boat. It was a good faith mistake. No problem here. Yeah, I'm good. I'm upon professionals and the town. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from members of the board? Is there anyone who would like to be heard this evening in connection with the application of Citron for 39 Wakeman Road in Hampton Bays? I see no hands. No hands. Okay. So I have a lead on this one. I will move that we close the application this evening, except for written submissions through September 21st at end of business. I hope we will have a decision ready at our October 1st meeting. Second. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Tunhill. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you all for your comments, and I wish you all the best. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, item four on the agenda is Peter and Nancy Manfredonia, 192 Washington Heights Avenue in Hampton Mays, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-186-1-64. Applicant requests relief from the town code 330-115C. Continuance for a principal rear yard setback at 22 feet, 
where 41.5 feet existing to legalize a screen porch addition constructed without the benefit of a building permit. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening, Susanna. Just have to swear you in. I don't know if you're muted. It seems to indicate you're muted. I'm there muted. Okay, if you can state your name and address. Susanna Herman and Consultants, 1319 North Sea Road, Southampton. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. If you can tell us about the application. Okay. Um, the application is for an existing screen porch. Um, can I go ahead and share my screen? Sure. Here we go. Um, can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay. So um, it's for this existing screen porch here. Uh, the screen porch is 314 square feet. It was constructed without a permit a few years ago, although we did recently receive a building permit for it. Um, but then it was discovered that it was issued in error. Um, it came to light because we submitted an application to the building department for this small one-story addition. Um, it was only, what, 142 square foot addition. And when we submitted that application, the building department pointed out that the screen porch had never gotten a permit. So we submitted an application for the screen porch and um, they issued a permit for that. But then when we went to close out the building permit and applied for a certificate of compliance for the addition, the building department realized that they should not have issued this building permit for the screen porch because this is in an R20 zoning district and there's a 60 foot rear yard setback requirement. Um, the screen porch was constructed over an existing concrete patio several years ago. The house itself um, is pre-1957. We have a, um, a pre-existing certificate of occupancy. It's obviously an undersized lot in the R20 zoning district uh, at only 7,732 square feet. The lot's only 50 feet wide. So this is the only location on the property where you could possibly construct any type of addition or screen porch um, to achieve these benefits. It is not visible from the road. Um, the, how, the existing house is actually set back pretty far from the pavement. Pavement's actually all the way out here. It's 64.5 feet from the front property line to the front of the house. So the screen porch is not visible at all from the street. Um, on the north and south property lines, there's stockade fences, which provide screening. It's also a very wooded area. Um, I have some additional photos. This is the view from the street. As you can see, um, when you're standing on Washington Heights Avenue, you, you can barely see the house. Um, it's a very modest screen porch onto a modest house. The existing house is um, 987 square feet. Um, it's another view looking from sort of the back corner of the lot. Um, you see this, the um, stockade fence to the south. And to does that, the, shed, does that shed have a CO? Yes, the shed has is on the pre-existing CO. Excellent, okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't have shown you that picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is the view from the back property line towards the lot that is behind here. So this is the rear lot line. Um, as you can see, it's a heavily, heavily wooded lot. This lot that's behind this subject property, which is the affected lot, is 80,000 square feet, and it's heavily wooded. And I don't know if you can see the house in the background back here. Uh, through the trees. Um, my estimate is that it's about 230 feet away from the property line. So they're not impacted. This house is currently under construction. This is the view from the back, the rear property line um, to the screen porch. Um, this is an arrow view. Here's the subject property here. And this is the wooded lot 
behind uh, behind here, behind the re the rear property line, and the house that's currently under construction is is much closer to uh, Channing Cross than um, than it is to the rear. It's up in this area here, so I don't see that there's any impact on any of the neighboring properties, and um, or any impact on the neighborhood in general. Um, it's a very constrained lot at just over 7,732 square feet and only 50 feet wide. Um, so I'm fairly confident that if they had come to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance for the screen porch that it would have been approved. Um, there's no environmental impacts. We conform to coverage requirements. Um, and that, as I said, it's, it's very small. It's only 314 square feet. It's a small house. Um, so I think the impact is, is very, very minimal. Um, this, this is a view from inside the porch looking back into the woods. So I just wanted to ask if you can give us more detail I know that there was a building permit applied for, but it was built for the screen porch, but it was applied for, maybe clarify for you, it was applied for after it was built, correct? Correct. Okay. And do we know who built the, the, the screen porch? And I know you said it was several years ago. Do you have more information as to who, who, put it, who installed it? I don't. I can find out from the owner. I think it was, you know, a handyman type um, construction operation. Okay, so question of members of the board. Do we want to have the owner come in and do the person who, who put up this porch? Well, these, these guys have owned the property since 90, 1996, right, Susanna? I believe that's correct, yeah. So did okay. they put it up? Yes, it was this homeowner. Okay. Did you say that again, Suzanne? Did they yes. put it up? It was when... This, home, this homeowner did own the property at the time that the screen porch was constructed. They didn't realize that they needed a building permit for a screen porch. Obviously, they should have. But typically, when we have S-Builts, we want information from someone who's familiar with the facts and circumstances as to how those structures went up. So, um, well, I appreciate the fact that it may not have an impact on the neighbors. Nevertheless, because we have so many S-Built structures, uh, in these kinds of situations. And I understand that there was building department error, they issued a, a building permit, but that was after the fact. That was after it went up. Um, in fact, if it was a contractor who put up the screen porch, they should have known to get a building permit or had the, had the owner do it. Um, so the question is uh, whether we want to have uh, the owner come in. Uh, I think as a matter of practice, we should uh, hear from them. That's just me. That's just me. Yeah. I agree. And um, yeah, I mean, Okay. I, I agree with Jason. I think it's a reasonable request. Okay. All right. So um, it looks like uh, we want to have uh, the owner come in or and or. How about Adam? Adam. I'm sorry. This, this thing's been there for years mm -hmm. and the guy's building a new house off the back there. Mm -hmm. Does I, that, To my knowledge, he doesn't have a problem. He knew the porch was there to begin with. Why don't we, in, instead of having them come in, can we do it in a written submission instead? If you want to make that your new practice. Yeah, it's, it's this board, Listen, listen. This board never sets precedents. Each case has and its own merits. What would be the nature of the written submission? I mean, they uh, for the owner to... What would this submission look like? The owner, owner was going to say he, they, they, it got built. They didn't think they needed, they needed a building. But they, what the build, what the building department have to say about this? Is it, another, is, it, is it another building department issue? They, they, the, the porch was built without a permit in place. They issued a permit after the fact. After the fact. Okay. Right. Right. But they issued the permit, though. They issued the permit. Right. Right, and it's built, it's built, you know, it's strapped, it's got the proper foundations and everything. It's built to code. It passed inspection. 
they were all ready to issue the certificate of compliance for everything. Um, and then they realized was it, it, was that. it built in 2019 when the permit was issued? It was already constructed prior to that. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Had it been there for 10 years before or had it been there for six months? Um, more than six months. Yeah. It's, I don't know exactly. Um, I, I thought Mr. Gross, some, I thought yeah, I was yeah, yeah. about seven years. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, so so it's not a building department mistake. No. Susanna, I'm, I'm a little confused. It says a um, builder's permit under building zone ordinance. We, it says um, dated April 20th, 2020. Uh, screen location, we know they located screen porch. And OD shower demo. Permit approval subject to field inspection. Work not to start until executive order addressing COVID nineteen is lifted. So I, I I don't see any permit or that that's a permit after it was fully built. Yeah, I mean it's there. Yeah, I mean yeah. the whole thing is so listen, it wasn't done listen, right. <laughs> listen, I'll remove my request for thank you submission. Go ahead, drag him in. <laughs> drag him in and zoom. Let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's get some public flogging going on. Well, right. it's consistency, consistency. Okay, and not not for nothing, uh, but Suzanne. I, I I would think that you would know that in something like this that we would ask for the owner to be present. So you know. I think there's some, some health issues, so I was trying to avoid that, um, if at all possible. But well, all you have to be doing is doing it from his house. So right. it's not like you have to bring him anywhere. Uh, I understand that. to tell us in the first instance not to have it be adjourned so that he can tell us his story. So I don't think you can use the excuse of health she, issues. She's, sure. not, uh, she's not complaining. Yeah. I'm not. I... <laughs> I, I know, I know. I did make the request that he, or recommendation that he should be here, and he really has a lot on his plate and asked that we try without. So yeah. okay. I hear yeah. the board, Understood. and I Understood. understand there needs to be um, a public comment from the homeowner. So we will we'll bring him in Understood. for public flogging. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I I just, I hope there's no actual... Um, resistance to the issuance of the variance provided that an explanation is provided because I know what he's going to say because is what he said to we, me we can't, I didn't we can't guarantee that, Suzanne. But that okay. would be, that I would just be. want to see if there was any feed, a substantive feedback in that direction no, you, uh, and I don't think you should say, uh, even say that to him please that all he has to do is come and then uh, therefore once we hear his story everything's going to be a-okay we have to still make a decision based on all the facts. And aside, I have to aside, on this case. Aside from whether he comes or he doesn't come, I don't have a problem with the application. Okay. Well, we still need him to come. Whatever. Three more. Yep. Let's, pick, let's, let's pick a date. Well, before we do that, just want to ask if there's anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard in connection with the application of Manta Fredonia. This is for 192 <laughs> Washington Heights Avenue in Hampton Bays. I see no hands. Okay. All right. So then the, the only other thing is our schedule. Um, so Susanna, I believe our next available meeting isn't the next meeting, but it's the following meeting, the second meeting in September. Okay. Um, so that would be what, 17th. Thir the 13th? 17th. 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 September. Okay. All right. But Helen right. the lead, so I'll okay, let you know. So, um, we're going to keep the public here open and the, bring in the owner uh, for our second meeting in September, which is September 17th. Second. second. Okay. Ms. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Bailey. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Thanks so much, Susanna. Have your best night. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks.
All right, next uh, item on the agenda is uh, under re advertised applications is uh, Donald T. Witkowski and Robert J. Wallace, Gioli and Chen applicants. Um, 26 Georgian Lane in Watermill, Suffolk County tax map 900 115 3 4. Uh, we, don't, we don't have jurisdiction on this, Katie. Uh, it's re advertised. Candace, does yep. he have to read? Yes. Yep, read it. Okay, applicant requests relief from the following provisions in the town code. One, for the proposed two-story dwelling, 330-115C, continuance for a principal front yard setback of 30 feet where 47.8 feet is permitted, and for a principal rear yard setback of 27 feet where 36.9 feet is permitted for the dwelling. Two, for the proposed accessory building, pool house. 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses. And 330-83C, yards to allow the proposed accessory building, pool house, to be located within the required total side yard for the principal dwelling. And three, for the proposed swimming pool with attached patio, 330-76D, placement of accessory buildings and structures and uses, and 330-83C yards to allow the proposed swimming pool to be located within the required total side yard for the principal building and a non-conforming lot and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Good evening. Applicant David Gilmartin, Jr., Farrell Fritz, 50 Station Road, Watermill, New York. Uh, can I ask my friend Charles to let in Adam Weintraub, who is the architect, and Eric Giulioli, who is the property owner? Yes, sir. Who is the architect, David? Adam Weintraub. Thank, thank you. I don't know if they have their uh, yeah they have their video on, but oh, there's Eric. Um, good evening. Uh, this application was re-advertised as a result of a meeting between uh, Mr. Giglioli and Ms. Chen and the neighbors, and uh, the application comes as a result of modifications to the original plan uh, that were agreed upon by the entire neighborhood and Mr. Giglioli and Ms. Chen. So tonight we're looking for the relief necessary to demolish the existing structure and construct uh, a single family dwelling and a pool uh, and a pool house. Um, Candace, can you allow me to uh, share documents? You may. Yeah, Charles does that. Sure, sure go ahead. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> okay. My son, yes. This is the survey, and, and I've marked it up a little. Um, the, uh, the area that's highlighted in blue is that area um, that we're looking for the relief for. So you see it's not, you know. Yeah, I, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Yet. Just seeing the usual cast of characters. It was a little better than John Bennett, but how about now? Not yet. No. Do you have permission to share? not getting the uh charles i'm not getting the um panel that allows me to do it you don't see it now 
No. no. All panelists have the right to share. Yeah, usually we see that thing that says, you know, David Gilmartin sharing screen. All right, I'm, I'm hitting share screen. Hmm. And then it's not. Do we have that? There we go. There we go. There we go. So I am a little bit better than John Bennett. Don't flatter yourself. Yeah, that's yeah, take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. Come on, he couldn't share. Uh, so he never <laughs> shares. Here's the uh, this is the survey. I've marked it up. You'll see the areas that are highlighted in blue um, that <clears throat> are outside of the area, and those are the areas that we are looking for relief for. Um, one of the challenges with this particular lot, you'll see how it's, it's oddly shaped. And this area in here um, really creates a challenge because we have the front yard set back here, side yard set back here. So it really pushes our, um, pushes our uh, improvements to the property to the narrowest part of the lot. And that's why we need uh, the front and rear yard relief. You know, I'd also note that the property is um, 24,648 square feet in an R60 zoning district. So the, you know, the, uh, the up zonings um, in 72 and then uh, 84 are really uh, what created the issue here. So that, that was our challenge, was to try and fit, you know, um, a relatively modest structure here um, with a pool um, while dealing with this uh, oddly configured lot. The, I have an um, aerial, I guess I gotta erase that. So, so this is the, um, Erase the my markings here. This is the um, this is the neighborhood, and if you see, there are several very large houses on either side of us. A large house um, here on the water, one that's across the street. Uh, these two houses. This is a um, an older aerial, but this house is improved. I have a picture of it. And it is, it is pretty large. And then this house is currently under construction and it is pretty large. So the, the character of this neighborhood is, is two story, uh, very large houses. Um, one of the accommodations that we talked about with the neighbors was shifting our proposal back, um, which is what we did. And if you look here, there's an open, I don't wanna call it a field, but there's an open area that's connected to the lot in front of us um, that allowed us to come back and not, uh, not really impact, this is, this is a garage here, not impact uh, the people in the neighborhood. Um, I think another one of the uh, significant points or compelling points here is the screening. In this, in this, um, make sure I can annotate. So here there are, and I have pictures of them that I'll follow up with. There's a significant amount of trees, um, and then you'll see them also here, um, that, that screen uh, what we're doing uh, to our, from our, um, from our east. There's also, and I'll, I'll have a picture of it to show you in a minute. This area in here is a mature hedge line that will also screen uh, the proposed new house uh, from view from people traveling down um, Georgian Lane. So if I can show you 
really awkward doing this in uh, without seeing you in person, where you can can really show the uh, documents. Sorry, I just got out of the share screen section. It looks like the proposed house is really not significantly more um, Looks like the existing house it was also outside of the uh, um, setbacks. It, it was. Here, this is the um, this is the uh, house that is on Rose Hill Road that's currently under construction that replaced uh, what was a pretty modest single-family dwelling, right. and then. Uh, this is the screening this is the screening looking down that driveway uh, that's to the east and it's as you can see some really mature trees there that provide a significant amount of screening um, the house that's um, This is a house that's directly across the street on Georgian Lane, another uh, very significant house. And then finally, finally, this is the, this is the hedge along Georgian Lane uh, that will provide again some significant screening. Uh, that's that's probably between eight and nine feet now, um, and I think that that's uh, compelling to screen off, um, screen off what exactly we're doing. Um, and David, you said that the neighbors all got together with the uh, with the owner, and this is what. Yeah, this 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 on. was what came out of it after a. A long discussion. The other thing that I should mention to you um, is that there is uh, currently a greenhouse that will be demolished as part of the uh, part of this application. So you can look at it as though the greenhouse is being replaced um, by the pool house. The board granted variances for the greenhouse. Sorry. Yes, the board granted variances for the greenhouse. That is correct, um, and the and the pool house will be shifted away from uh, that front yard there and, and more towards the rear yard. Um, when we look at substantiality of our request, uh, the the variances are all under fifty percent. Uh, but as this board knows, you're required to look at the totality of the circumstances, and I would say the totality of those circumstances include again the screening. Uh, the fact that 11.6% lot coverage is being used here where 15% is permitted, so it, we're building less uh, than we're entitled to. Um, the open field behind provides, provides some comfort to uh, the people to the uh, north. And, and again, we do have the neighbor support here. Um, with respect to any environmental considerations, um, as this board well knows, this is a type two variance and under CICRA, uh, DEC has categorically determined uh, that they will not have a negative impact on the environment. And moreover, um, this property will be, be required to install an IA system here. Um, with respect to the hardship that's uh, encountered by the applicant, 
I believe it's the configuration of the lot here um, combined with the rezonings that have taken place over the years, which I have uh, made this lot non-conforming in size. Those two factors really make it challenging to do anything on this lot uh, and meet zoning. So with that, we can answer any questions. Again, we have the architect here um, and Mr. Giglioli is here and we'll try and answer any questions, but we'd respectfully ask that you grant our request. Um, the first thing I just wanted to mention, um, uh, David, is I'm always happy to hear when neighbors are, and, and applicants are communicating and, and, and trying to work out their differences. That's always a good thing. Um, next one to mention, we did get comments from on the revised application from Dennis O'Rourke. Uh, Chief Building Inspector, I'm not sure if you received copies of any of these comments. Yes, we did, and, and we responded. He has plans, um, and he also has a um, pyramid law analysis uh, that was done by the architect. So we've, I think we've satisfied uh, Mr. O'Rourke with those. Okay. Has he reviewed them, or he just has them? Uh, I, I know that he has them, and, and they do uh, show that we comply with the pyramid law. Okay, so I know you have Adam and Eric both uh, uh, waiting to be heard. Um, so whoever would like to go first, raise your hand. <laughs> uh, Mr. Giglioli is a lawyer, uh, so he does not need to be sworn in. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so Mr. Giglioli, you're, you're next. Yes, good evening. Thank you for uh, your time tonight. Um, and yes, I just, the only thing I can really add is to confirm what uh, David Bill Martin said, which is that we had submitted uh, uh, proposals uh, and some of our neighbors uh, asked to meet with us. In fact, we ended up meeting with all of the neighbors uh, that are around here. And the principal concern that was voiced was uh, that at the time we had uh, about a 25 foot setback from the front yard in the original proposal. And they had some concerns about that. So we addressed that by moving the house to 30 foot setback and we lowered the profile of the roof uh, so that it's now, there's a dormer window there. Uh, and um, the additional considerations that he requested that if there's any damage to the road during construction that we would commit to, uh, to repair those at our expense. And we have done so, we've committed in writing to do that. They also asked to see our proposed landscaping plan uh, and we agreed to provide that when it's ready. It's not ready yet. Uh, we intend to um, increase the amount of vegetation, uh, not decrease it. So in addition to uh, the vegetation that uh, David pointed to, uh, we, will, um, we will be adding to that to increase the privacy, both from, from our perspective and the perspective of the neighbors. So I think, David, that's all, unless you think... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again. I appreciate your time. Thank you for your comments, sir. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Adam. Uh, um, I, am, I swear to tell the truth, uh, Adam Weintraub, 799 Greenwich Street, New York, New York. I swear to tell the whole, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm merely here to answer any questions uh, and just to reiterate that working with uh, the Giliolis and the neighbors, we were able to go back and forth and I think achieve uh, a sensible plan and sensitive to the neighborhood and uh, appreciate your consideration. No problem. Um, so, uh, David, this one thing I wanted to mention is that the, uh, the screening, uh, would you or your, your client have any objection to a condition being placed in any decision that that screening be maintained? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. All right. Well, a lot of effort was put into this, and I, and I greatly appreciate it. I'm not sure whether there are any neighbors who are going to you know, want to be heard, uh, but it's a, a, always a, a positive, positive development when I hear uh, you know, applicants and neighbors communicating and trying to work things out when they have concerns. Um, that's, uh, may, may, I, may I just ask a question? The, the screening that, uh, that David showed, uh, we, will, we intend to maintain. Um, the, we would intend to change the screening and actually increase it on the uh, west side, uh, but, but it'll be different. In other words, we, we will make changes on the west side, uh, just to be sure that the record reflects that, you know, we, we, we we want to maintain the flexibility to change the screening on the, on the west side in order to increase it. Uh, yeah, but it would, yeah. We were agreeing to the, um, to the east and the south side. That's fine. That's fine. 
Yeah. And, 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 and there'll be a, uh, a robust landscaping plan here yes. for the neighbors. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you, do you think you'll be able to submit the landscape plan before we have a decision or, or no? I, I suspect, I suspect not, uh, Chairman Grossman. Yeah. We have, we, we, I guess we've been working focused so much on the drawings and we've actually spent a lot of time to try to address the concerns of the neighbors. Uh, gone back and forth with our architect quite a bit. So we haven't really focused on the landscaping plan. We don't have a landscape architect and we don't have, we were, we're far behind, I'm afraid, on that. That's all right. So I just want to make sure that we, that we have uh, the conditions uh, are clear um, to be consistent with what the understanding is between uh, the applicants and the neighbors. Yeah. Um, so, the, so what the screening is to the, to the east and the south, uh, what I had highlighted uh, in the presentation. So we, we will agree to maintain that. And then um, we've had some discussions with the neighbor to the west about providing, um, providing screening. He's a builder. He's a pretty sophisticated uh, developer in the town. Um, so we have agreed that we will sit and come to a, an agreement with him. Um, I know him fairly well, so so that that will be done. But again, we'll agree to the to the east and the south side maintaining that. Is that sufficient, Adam? It is. But I'm speaking for myself. Is everyone else okay? Other board sufficient for the board? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions to members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application of Jaleli and Chen for 26 Georgian Lane and Watermill? I see no hands. No hands. Okay. All right. So I have a lead on the application. Uh, we will, I would move that we close the application except for written subs, like our other applications, until September 21st at end of business. And we will have a decision ready on our October 1st meeting. Second. Oh, and I forgot to mention the written subs will, will include, uh, you, know, uh, you know, any, well, actually we can talk, well, it will include the, um, well, actually, Katie, I don't think we need anything. I think probably we already have it on the record in terms of the screen. So. We, we the written it. subs, it just remains open to, for all purposes. For all purposes. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. So we have a second. Uh, Mr. Kelly. All right. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Joe Botsai, thank you all for being here and thank you for all your efforts. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Well, why don't we take a short break? We've been going for two hours. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're just going to take a short break for a few minutes. The agenda is German Rivera. 577 East Montauk Highway in Shinnecock Hills, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-232-120. This is adjourned from our 86 meeting. Yep, who do we have on this application? I'm sorry, you talking to me? I think we have Linda Ruisi on this? Yes. Hi, Linda, I just have to see you. Okay. Let me see your name and address. My name is Linda Ruisi. Business location is 76 West Montauk Highway, Hampton Bays, New York, 11946. I'm the agent for Mr. Rivera. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So if you can tell us about the application. Um, we're here uh, today, we're asking relief for uh, the town code 338-84D, which is the pyramid height. Uh, for an encroachment that is an amount of 115 cubic feet for a proposed second addition to an existing dwelling on a non-conforming lot and any other relief that's necessary, which I don't believe that there is anything because we're not increasing the size of the structure itself. We're just going up for the addition and we're in such a, a modest amount of the encroachment. This is why we're here. Okay. Minimal relief. Correct. I can't see how this could have any impact on any neighbors. Have you heard from any of the neighbors? None, not at all. Okay. Any questions to members of the board? No. Nope. Oh. Tiny relief. Okay. Is there any one from the public who would like to be, who's waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application of Rivera? Uh, this is for 577 East Montauk Highway in Shinnecock Hills. I see no hands. 
So I just see this as being minimal relief uh, for a second story edition. Um, so uh, in any case, uh, Mike, it is yours. Okay, we will close this public hearing, uh, except for written submissions. Uh, uh, we'll have those written submissions in by September 21st, and we'll have a decision for you on the October 1st meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Thank you for being here. Have a good night. You too. Thank you so much. All right. Item seven on the agenda is Frank Franzes. All I have, Adam, is it's a reopened application. I have no, no other information. Okay. Yep. It's for 50, 55 Alden Lane, and we're looking for Sal. Um, Ioni? Yep. Who I see his uh, name. Yep. Hello? Sal, so see if you can share your video. Oh, okay. There we go. There you go. We, now we, unmute uh, yourself. You're still muted. That there better? You go. Okay. Yep. All right. So I know um, this is this was uh, originally closed and then it was reopened. Um, we're, I believe I previously swore you in. Yes. Okay. So you're still sworn, and maybe you can update us as to where we are at, at the moment. Yes, we were before the board approximately a year ago, um, and we were trying to get our wetland permits from the town conservation board, which we've now finally gotten. Uh, as a result of those permits, they reduced our uh, deck on the si south side of the house, which reduced our pyramid relief request. Um, we were previously requesting, um, my glass is 43 square feet or 1,044 cubic feet. And now because the deck has been cut back, we need 22 square feet and or 715 cubic feet of relief for pyramid. It's a one-story residence being elevated to uh, for FEMA. Okay. So you're back to ask for less. We're back to ask for less, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Have you heard from any of your neighbors? No. Well, it's still very minimal relief. The last last application was really minimal relief, but this is still, to me, pretty minimal pyramid relief. Yes. And like I said in the last application, I have to really be convinced that this would have any impact on any of the neighbors. Now, it's uh, the area that we're talking about is on the south side of the residence, which uh, is just Jason wetlands. Okay. Even better. All right, so I, I think we just got all of these plans recently. Um, so I think we just have, have to make sure the building department takes a look at them and confirms everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as long as the building department is fine with them, we're good to go, but we're leaving over yep. submissions. So if the building department needs any plans or, or any submissions to be revised, you know, then, then we would just need those revisions to be submitted, <laughs> and, we're, and we're good to go. Yes. Any other questions from members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who would like to hear this evening in connection with the application of Francis for 55 Alden Lane in Quayoc? I see none. Okay, if not, Cornelius, it's yours. I move to close the public hearing, leaving open for written submissions until September 21st with a decision on October 1st. Thank you. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Um, Mike, you got to turn your, uh, you got to unmute. <laughs> that might help. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Chair votes on. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm, I'm, I always appreciate when we have an application reducing the amount of pyramid relief. 
and I uh, wish you all the best with the project. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good night. Have a good night. All right, moving on to item nine of the agenda, which is Michael Esposito and Louis Esposito, 730 Flanders Road in Flanders, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-143-2-48. This is a holdover application. Multiple, okay. multiple were, times. Yep, well, they, they were, they were I, think, I think we're in the process of CECRA. So, Linda, you can unmute yourself and give the board an update. Yes, hi. Um, the only update that I have at this moment is that my client has is retained a, um, a new engineer, as I'm told. I'm just waiting for some paperwork to show proof of that. Once I do that, I'll be able to have a meeting with the engineer to go over what is needed and then go forth. So I'm going to ask the board if I could possibly have at least uh, three months based upon I didn't receive any notice as of yet for the new engineer that she was supposedly retained, but again, I didn't get proof of that to show me. Okay, and this, this is just to revise your plans, right, and to get them to the planning department so they can figure out what the environmental impact is? Correct. Okay. Okay, um, so three months from now, uh, it would be second meeting in November. Okay. I just don't know what the what the date is on that. The nineteenth. Nineteenth. Okay. And the nineteenth. Okay. So Brian is actually, according to my notes, uh, uh, came to lead on this application. Uh, he's not here. Uh, so I would move that we. Oh, before I do that, I gotta ask if there's anyone from the public. Um, uh, well, any questions of members of the board? Is there anyone from the public who would like to be heard this evening in connection with the application of Esposito for 230 Flanders Road in Flanders? I see no Wait hands. On, 7.30. No hands. No hands, okay. Then I would move that we adjourn the application of Esposito for all purposes until our uh, November 19th meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. Mr. Hahn. Hey. Mr. Kelly. Hi. Mr. Daly. Hi. Ms. Burgess. Hi. Mr. Tuthill. Hi. Joe Botai. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Item 11 on the agenda is Valerie Sirigano, 105 Edgemere Drive in North Sea, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-32. Dash one, dash twelve. It's a holdover. Yep, Daphne. Hi, Daphne Vaughn, Surfside Environmental Planning. Hi, Daphne. Um, looks like I had previously sworn you in. Yes, you have. Uh, there should be the builder with me as well, uh, Jim Trainer, and also Tina Ross, who is Valerie Sirignano's daughter. Okay. Um, so I can update you to just uh, reiterate that uh, last meeting, we submitted revised plans that show a reduction in the height of the house by six and a half feet from our initial proposal. We dropped down the requested amount of pyramid from 17,659.5 cubic feet to a total of 10,687.18 cubic feet. Uh, and about 2,600 square feet of that was existing, pre-existing non-conforming pyramid. <clears throat> so we overall reduced the pyramid by 6,972.32 cubic feet. And that was done by lowering the first floor elevation of the house uh, by three feet. We relocated the house to six feet from the property line, which is currently 2.6 feet on the eastern side. Uh, we changed the roof pitch to the minimum that it could possibly be, and the um, ceiling height of the first floor has been reduced to eight feet from nine. So, uh, Daphne, it's still 10,000? Yeah, so I, I spoke with the homeowner's daughter who was on tonight. Uh, she was unable to be here at the last meeting. 
because she had a power outage at her home in Connecticut. Uh, and Jim Trainer also had some issues. So basically, the whole board was not present at the last meeting, and I did not have the uh, my 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 partners in crime, so to speak, with me. So I have them tonight, and I wanted both of them to be able to iterate to the board uh, their their piece. Uh, Daphne, did did you make any attempt to lower that number of ten thousand six hundred and eighty-seven to something lower than that? Uh, not yet. Uh, there was not a clear sense from the whole board. There were two members that had said that they were wanted us to reduce it further. Uh, like I said, we were missing two members at the last meeting. Uh, so I just thought that it was a good idea for us to give you the complete story from everyone's point of view involved in the project. But, but there was no attempt to reduce the number? Not at this time. We've done some preliminary thoughts on how we could possibly come down any more. Yeah. Um, I would request that you listen to the applicant and the builder. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, who would like to go first, the applicant or the builder? I can. You can? Okay, so I just have to swear you in. You can uh, state your name and address. My name is Tina Ross, 6 Chickadee Lane, Brookfield, Connecticut. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And are you the daughter, the daughter of the owner? I am. Okay, so you're speaking on her behalf in a way? Correct. Okay. Yes, from my perspective. So thank you for hearing our requests and for allowing me to provide a quick history tonight. Um, the property's been in my family for over 70 years. My dad grew up here. I've grown up here. Uh, my kids will continue to grow up here. It's, uh, it's our home. There's generations of memories at this location. And um, unfortunately, the structure of the house itself is compromised because it's over 100 years old. So our goal would be to repurpose the property, to use the existing footprint, to modernize. Um, you should note, we should note that we've already put in an IA septic system. We'd like to add a modest size increase as various neighbors have done throughout the years in order to create this new home for our multi-generational family, which would add value, <clears throat> excuse me, to the neighborhood as well. And I appreciate your support in helping us achieve our goal. Well, and I appreciate that. Just so you understand, because the initial application was such a large <laughs> a cubic feet of pyramid relief, which is far more than we uh, uh, you know, grant uh, most of the time. Um, we requested uh, that the initial application be modified. The application has been modified. I'm not sure where the board members are in terms of the modified application. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, I do appreciate the fact that, we're, that, that you're you know, willing to uh, address the concerns of the board. So, um, Mr. Trader, do you want to uh, have me swear you in next? Sure, sure. You just state your name and address. James Trainer, 40 Club Lane, Remsenburg, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this uh, application from your perspective? Uh, yep, I've been I've been working in that community for quite a few years. Over the past ten or fifteen years, I've worked on that particular house on several different occasions. And like Tina had just explained, uh, I, I believe the old foundation is brick. It's decaying. The house is basically crumbling down. Um, there's no way you could really repair it um, without turning it into a complete restoration project, which would be, you know, ridiculously expensive and really wouldn't be fruitful anyway. Uh, the what it what it appears, and I don't I don't know how far back. If this house was built a hundred years ago, a forty foot lot was probably Okay, that might have been the case. But now I think that that 40 foot is, is the majority of their problem. If they were on a 45 foot lot, like some other houses in the community have, have been given variances on, then I think the relief would be a lot less. Um, but there's no way they can be on no a 45 foot lot. And they've been there, you know, the family's been there for, for, for so long. We've done quite a bit 
to try and do everything the house conform as much as possible, in my opinion, to the detriment of the design to the house for the neighbors and everything else. I mean, we've got it down to a four and a half pitch on the roof, which, you know, re decreases our height, but she's on Peconic Bay with, you know, 80 mile an hour windstorms and we got a four pitch because we're trying to meet it. And it's not, it's not the most attractive. So how much further do we go to try and squeeze it to, to get down another thousand square feet? And is it going to really help the neighborhood all that much? I don't know. So um, we slid the house more to the center because we thought that would make it more conforming um, in another attempt to try and do as much as we could. And again, if somebody's got some ideas, we're open to anything else. If anything we can do, we're willing to do to try and get it as close as we can to uh, what, what would be required to get approved. It, it does seem like there have been other properties in the area that have had large variances granted and approved in the past. I don't think we would be setting precedents in this case. Well, I appreciate that. I will tell you that um, the vast majority of, of pyramid variances we grant are, I would say, 5,000 cubic feet or less. Obviously, that's the vast majority. So whenever it's something that goes significantly above that, we scrutinize. And what we had originally was really, really above that. And so I appreciate the fact that, that, that you've been working uh, with the applicants and, and with Daphne uh, to modify uh, the project in order to reduce the pyramid relief. Um, I'm not sure where board members are as to whether um, majority are satisfied with the modified uh, pyramid relief. I'm just not sure. We'll find out. The, the only other thing that I would ask, and I don't know, maybe maybe our mistake or my mistake in the beginning, but uh, we thought in the original application that we were going to be looked at from the FEMA floodplain, so we didn't realize we were going to be that high. Uh, and the other question is the maps, which I personally don't trust 100%, that house only shows like 100 feet out of being FEMA compliant. It's if that house was 100 feet over, then we would be taking this reading from three feet higher and our numbers would be so much different. And if I was going to put all of my money into that neighborhood and I would really want to be compliant if I, you know, as high as I could be. And that's, they're losing that opportunity. The house is actually 78 feet to the concrete wall, which is acting as a bulkhead. And it's 66 feet to the flood zone boundary, which goes from an X to a VE uh, eight. So it's, there's not even an AE flood zone intermediary. It just goes from no flood zone to a VE8, 66 feet away from this house. So if that's off just a little bit in a bad storm, they're, they're in trouble. That's for the height. That's for the height of the structure. That's for the first floor elevation, basically. Correct. If, if that was the case, wouldn't the first floor elevation be at FEMA floodplain? Yeah, but I don't think it matters for calculating pyramid. Oh, it, would. I don't, uh, um, it would, because if we were in a flood zone, then the pyramid would start at base flood elevation plus two, where here we're starting at grade. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah, that so would that, actually, if we were in a flood zone, saying. it would buy us probably a lot of reduction in pyramid. Yeah. And and how 66 feet away from that. So you're so build, you're, are you building as if you're in a flood zone? We're building, I believe it's slightly higher. Right now, the first floor elevation is at 10.4, and I think we're elevating it to 12. Right, Jim? I think that's what... No, no, I believe that what we have now is only 8 inches out of grade or 10 inches oh, out then, of grade. Yeah, so then it's we're keeping the what, first floor what, elevation, so... Well, which, but then that, that takes away from your argument. If you're not even building it to FEMA, then you're... If I was going to say, if you're building it to FEMA compliance and you still have a pyramid, then you well, would you'd be encouraging a, safe construction. It's a VE8, the, the flood zone. So we would have to be at an elevation of 10 and would have to be built on pilings. This does not have to be built on pilings. We are building it. If, if we're maintaining the existing first floor elevation, that's at 10. We were going up to, I think, 14 at one point. I don't understand. Are you... <laughs> Have you elevated it even though you're not in a flood zone? It's, it's, I don't think that we're elevating it anymore. No, the original application, we had it elevated. 
then yeah. we then we had we lowered it because we're 66 feet out and we can lower it. I guess the the, yeah. the, the, the thought the thought from the homeowner standpoint is over 66 feet they have to build a house that they would rather have had higher out of the ground for safety issues so they lose there and because the lots granted 100 years ago at 44 at 40 feet that then their pyramid starts six inches above the first floor plate so they're really getting they're getting hit on both ends and there's no way to really make it conform even though they're trying to every way they can well other than making it a one story right, right? Making, yeah, making it a smaller house I, I guess that, yes, that could be the answer, but looking at other variances that have been granted in that area in the past and looking at that whole seashore row, there are many two foot, I think there's a two story house on a 45 foot lot, two or three doors down. Yes. So it, it's not like it doesn't, conf it's not like it doesn't, it would look out of place, I don't, I don't think. 10,000 10, cubic feet of pyramid is not something that I would e I would even consider agreeing to. I wouldn't consider it either. I thought you were coming back, Daphne, with a lower yeah, number. Yeah, I thought that was the purpose of you. today's meeting. We made it very clear, Daphne, last time that that was too much. And to come back with the same amount, is, is, you're wasting. Well, two wasting. members made it clear, and it, there were two members missing. So that was... That's the problem. And uh, okay, well, we're gonna find out shortly where everybody else is. Can I ask? Can I ask one other question, guys? And, and I think ultimately we're all trying to work to the same goal and ending that's good for us and for you guys. We're all on the. We're trying to get to a good ending. If if ten thousand is too big, what is the driving number? What do we have to get to? Because what, from the customer standpoint, every time I go back and say, okay. We got to get the engineer and recalculate. We got to get the architect and redraw. She's spending thousands and thousands of dollars to try and get where, where would you say, okay, if you got the 7,800 cubic feet, way to prove it. If you got to 62, what is the number? And then we, give us a few, give us a, a couple of minutes. All right. And we'll let you know. Okay. 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 And, and the one, two doors down was uh, 5,412 cubic feet. That's a good number. That was a but that's, question. but that's on a 45 foot lot. Right. Uh, you, you said there was one two doors down. I just was telling you what it was at. Right. Oh, no, I'm sorry, ma'am. My, my, my point was it's that better, it's, it's a better foot. number. It's not a great number. I'm sorry. Right. And Mr. Grossman told you earlier that this board is typically uh, um, more agreeable to 5,000 cubic feet or less. Yeah. So you're at 10,000. You're not anywhere near the ballpark. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, it is a very narrow lot, and it is a pre-existing, it was a pre-existing structure, and the applicant has put a fair amount of effort into cutting the amount of pyramid relief down significantly. The question is whether there is a majority of this board that can live with that number, and also, you know, I, I have to mention as well, I'm a little bit concerned that the property is 60 something feet away from the flood zone. And there, and that sounds like they're grade. So I kind of feel like this property could be possibly endangered, even though they're not required to raise the house. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm not sure if any of the other board members have uh, thoughts about this. Because we need, we need we need to give the applicants some direction. Yeah. Um, you get down to seventy five hundred cubic feet, I'm like, vote. This is made up. I think that's a reasonable proposition. I think Jason made a reasonable proposition on the seventy five hundred. Okay. Well, let's. That's great. I appreciate that. I think that at least we have something to work towards now. We know what we have to do. That's just two, though. You need two more. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Jay? <laughs> From my perspective, do we need a full set of plans, or can we have an engineered calculation of a proposed savings in cubic footage? Um, you know, we've spent a lot of money having the plans made. Can can we have an engineer do a calculation? 
I'm not sure what what's what would be required. I, I think we may need new plants. Well, I mean, you know, the architect can do the the plants, but you know, you would do the bare minimum, get the proposed amount, and then if the board seems in favor of it, then you have to submit the full plans. Okay, thank you. Keith, you have any thoughts? My thoughts. I don't want to. I don't want to be sixty six feet from disaster. You know, I don't want these poor people that happening. I'm not really cool with ten thousand. 687 right now. I mean, if they can get it down to a couple thousand cubic feet, I guess I'll go with it. Okay, so it sounds to me you know like... I mean, but, I, but my concern, my heartfelt concern is still they're only 66 feet away from the flood zone. Me too. I, mean, I, I concur with you, you know. And when we went through Sandy, it was FEMA, yeah, give, them, give them more, give them more, give them more. Right. You know, I want to... I, I don't want to see him spend all this money and build a house and, you know, look what we went through last house. year. You can look build a house. The build a smaller year. house. Yeah, whatever. I said, if they can get it down, so be it. But I'm still worried about that. You know what I mean? Look what happened two, a week ago, two weeks ago. Who knows when the next one's coming up the coast? And it's it's not worth expanding the house, you know, towards the street, like towards the garage. Well, the septic system, uh, well, septic, the old septic system used to be in that location. If we were to expand landward, I don't think that they would achieve what they would be looking for. I don't more know. space? I mean, I, I'm talking about more well, space. Well, the problem, I guess, would be then how, the proximity to the garage. There's only so far we could go to not be right on top of it. Mm. I don't know. Okay. So I'm well, that's with something to be considered. Right. I mean, you can't have you maybe not have everything. Yeah. So I'm with Keith Cornelius and, and Jason that if it's reduced to around 7,500 feet, I'm okay with it too. So that's four, that's four of us. So that's direction. The question is how you get there. And so it may mean that you have to take something out of what's, what's proposed in the house. Okay, thank you. Thank we're you trying to work with you. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, no thank problem. you all. Okay. How much time you need? How much a week? time do you think, Jim? A week? A week? A week? I won't be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do it a written sub, or do we want to have them come back? I think we're going to pop. I, I think, myself, I think we would want them maybe to come back and let's hear it. You know yeah. what I mean? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what, what, what the, the number's going to be. We got room, what, the second meeting in September, right? Correct. September 17th. So I can remember? Yes. Okay. But before I do any of that, I want to ask about any other questions and members of the board. One of the things I'm concerned about and I'm confused about is Daphne, you, you know, you've been before this board so many times, so many times. So you know how we feel about 17,000, which we started with. I mean, when Miss Ross mentioned money that was spent on changing and changing. I think, you know, I don't want to tell you how to do your business, but you have to tell the people have to what the board, the board grants or doesn't grant, how they spend money doing this, doing that, and, and, and all this could have been eliminated if we, if, if information, I think, could have been given to the owner, the builder, or whoever, that of what we usually grant, and then it could. That information was given. Yeah, um, but yeah, to be fair, I think this is what we asked that to do. Funny, I'm doing right. it again and yeah, again and again. Well, then it yeah, really yeah. has to be made a little bit more clear. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, if I was the applicant, yeah. I would really like somebody who was helping me to come down really hard hard so that I don't have to feel bad about money that I unnecessarily spent. So I'm sorry. Well, 
I think the applicant dr drives the applications generally. Um, but, but, but I think, Helen, you're also correct that the applicant needs to be guided correctly. Yes, I agree 150%. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank we, we still thank love you, Daphne. We love you. you know, I mean, just, um, <laughs> believe me, Helen, I told them this. Believe me. <laughs> now you got to, like, knock it over their heads, whatever. <laughs> okay. 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 Hey, um, give, it a, give it a 3,000 cubic feet and come back. We'll see you on the 17th. Okay. All right. So did <laughs> I ask Thank you, guys. Is there, if there's anyone from the public who would like to be heard in connection with the application in Serignano for 105 Edge Near Drive in North Sea? Anyone waiting on Zoom to be heard? No hands. No hands. Okay. If not, Jason, it's yours. I'll make a motion to adjourn uh, this application to September 17th. Second. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Tuttle, I think you were the second. Aye. Uh, Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Joe Matai, thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you all. Good night. Have the rest of the night. Okay, and what I got is uh, the next case is uh, William Kaneke, which is an amended decision. I guess you, you're going to do that, and then we just go into the decision calendar. Yep. <laughs> All right, so Keith, you, Keith, you can read the amended, the intro. I actually have it. I don't have anything. I have it. Ah, okay. Okay. okay, so I will do the amended decision. So we have an amended decision in the matter of the application of William Keinke for property located at Southern County Tax Act number 962-148. This amendment is for property located at 74 Waters Edge, North Sea. The applicant had requested variances to legalize a concrete patio, which was discussed at the public hearing, but not included in the decision. This request passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board amends ZBA decision number D020073, dated August 6, 2020, to include the granting of variances from Town Code 33076D, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses in all districts, and 33083C yards to allow a concrete patio to be located within the required minimum and total side yard for the principal building. These variances and those granted by decision number D020073 dated August 6, 2020, are for structures as shown on the survey prepared by Gary Benz, surveyor dated April 18, 2019, last revised August 27, 2019. The granting of this relief is also subject to such other conditions and permits as applicants applicant had already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. All of the provisions of decision number D020073 remain in full force and effect. Second. Mr. Yes. Tuttle. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Joe outside. Decisions. So I have a few to read. We'll start with application, a decision on the application of Fidel. This is Robert, the application of Robert Fidel, tax rep number 902052, 3.10. This application is for property located at 30 Squires Boulevard, Hampton Bays. Applicant seeks variances to legalize an enclosed unheated porch and wood deck constructed by his father and brother about 20 years ago without a permit. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, and for the aforementioned reasons, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the Town Code. One, to legalize an enclosed unheated porch constructed without the benefit of a building permit, Town Code 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations, for a principal minimum side yard setback of 18.3 feet, where 20 feet is required, and two, to legalize a wood deck constructed without the benefit of a building permit under the enclosed unheated porch and around the swimming pool. Relief from Town Code 33011 for an accessory side yard setback of 18.3 feet where 20 feet is required. The granting of these variances are for structures as shown on the survey prepared by David Fox, David H. Fox, land surveyor, dated July 9, 2018, last updated November 7, 2019, and are subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired. 
final approval of the subject premises, including any approvals required from the town planning board and building department. It is possible clearing issues prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance slash occupancy. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Next up a determination in the application of Emma Carrera Cruz and Luis Pedrova Urgiles for property located in the Suffolk County Tax Rep number 900-268-32. This applicant is for property located at 3 Woodbridge Road, Hampton Bays. The applicants are seeking variances to legalize a covered porch addition and also to convert a finished basement into an accessory apartment for their mother-in-law. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants applicant relief from Town Code 33011, Residential D Districts Table of Dimensional Regulations for a principal front yard setback of 35.1 feet, where 40 feet is required for a proposed covered porch addition to an existing dwelling. This board also grants relief from the provisions of Town Code 330.11.2F Accessory Apartment Special Standards to legalize an accessory apartment constructed in the basement of the dwelling of the dwelling without the benefit of a building permit. One, relief to allow the to remain. Sorry, to remain. Um, lost track. Oh, to remain on a lot that is less than thirty thousand square feet. Two to allow a lot area of 10,667 square feet, where 16,000 square feet is required, 80% of the required 20,000 square feet, and two for a principal rear yard setback of 37.3 feet, where 42 feet is required, 70% of the required 60 feet. This relief is granted for structures as shown on the plans prepared by Ronald Polano, architect, dated May 30th, 2019, and the survey prepared by Michael W. Minto, last revised February, 2020, Received by this board June 1st, 2020. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including but not limited to an accessory apartment application form. We have Thanks. Mr. Kelly, you seconded? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kelly? Aye. Daly? Aye. Mr. Hahn? Aye. Mr. Burgess? Aye. Tuttle? Aye. Aye. Your votes on. Next is the application of 27 Dune LLC, property located at Seven County Tax Rep number 900 386 This applica application is for property located at 27 Dune Road, East Quad. Applicant seeks a minimum side yard variance for a proposed shed on the property located in the adjacent area. This application initially sought additional variances, but was modified to eliminate all but one variance. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, and for the reasons set forth herein, this board grants relief, applicant relief, from Town Code 330-46.2B-4B for a proposed minimum side yard setback of 11.2 feet from the easterly lot line for the construction of a shed where the minimum required side yard setback for each side shall be 11.52 feet. The minimum side yard for the principal building, including attached decking and porches, for each side shall be the lesser of 20% of lot width or 20 feet, as shown on the survey prepared by David H. Fox of Fox Land Surveying, dated January 2nd, 2019, last revised July 3rd, 2020. Granted the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired and may otherwise have to acquire for final approval. Second. Yeah, second. Second. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Your vote's on. Okay, and the last application I have on is River Rock Structured Capital LLC, Suffolk County Tax Act member 900 115 Well, a much longer decision will be filed in the town clerk's office next week. Um, I'm reading just the, the, the pristine. Uh, let me see. Katie will email unofficial copies of the decision out tomorrow to the attorneys in this matter, and I've also seen the full decision. This application is for property located at 186 Crescent Avenue, Watermill. As the board recalls, applicant here seeks variances to address construction on the premises as it relates to the main dwelling, tennis court, 
and lot coverage, and also to convert a cottage into a carriage house or, alter or alternate relief. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, and for the reasons set forth herein, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the Town Code. For the two-story dwelling under construction, 33011 Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations to allow the height of the dwelling to be 44.6 feet, where a maximum of 42 feet is permitted. Two, 33011 for a total lot coverage of 14.4%, where a maximum of 10% is required. And three, 33083K yards for a principal front yard setback from the easterly property line, David's Lane, Crescent Avenue, of 38.1 feet, where 40 feet is permitted. And to, two, to legalize the location of the tennis court, 33011 for an accessory uh, side yard setback of 28.5 feet, where 30 feet is required. Town code 33076D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and town code 33083C yards to allow the tennis court to remain within a required side yard for the principal building so long as the tennis court's dimensions are reduced to 55 by 110. This board also grants relief for the following provisions of the town code to allow the existing cottage to be converted into a carriage house. One, 339D4, density incentive provisions to permit a carriage house on a lot where the property size is less than three acres. Two, 339D4B, to permit a carriage house on a lot where the principal dwelling does not comply with all applicable dimensional requirements of the code to it a height of 44.6 feet where a maximum of 42 feet is permitted and a principal front yard setback from the easterly property line, David Lane, Crescent Avenue, of 33.1 feet where 40 feet is permitted. And three, relief from 339D4C to allow the carriage house to remain at a front yard setback of 19.1 feet from the westerly lot line, Mud Creek, where a carriage house shall have a front yard setback of at least 10 feet greater than the, than the principal dwelling setback and to remain at a setback of 23.4 feet where 30 feet is required. The granting of these variances are for structures as shown on the site plan prepared by Squires, Holden, Weisenbacher, and Smith, last revised on March 12, 2020. Architectural plans for the main house prepared by Val Florio Architect PLLC, dated July 2, 2019. And the architectural plans for the carriage house prepared by Val Florio Architect PLLC, last revised on May 2, 2019. Any revisions to the plans or surveys to show compliance with the town code and conditions of this decision will not require an amendment to this decision. Grant of the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired and may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including but not limited to the bringing in of the required development right, PBC, pursuant to Town Code 33094, and the securing of permits, modifications, renewals of wetlands permits, and sign-offs prior to the issuance of any certificate of compliance slash occupancy. Thank you. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Hahn. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. No. Chair votes aye. All right. I think uh, not too bad before 9 o'clock. Did, did, did we do a decision on OPH Building Corp, or was that uh, put off? 9-3. Put off. Yeah. It's been put off. 9-3. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Motion to close. I just want to make sure, Katie, I got them all, right? You got them all, yes. I got them all, okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right. Do we have a second and motion to close? Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are closed. Good night, everybody. Thank you.